Yes, hello again and welcome to another Sydney FC pre-game show. Today we are in the lobby of the beautiful Darling Hotel, part of the Star City uh, complex of course. Uh, principal partner of uh, Sydney FC and Alex Brosk and Simon Hill for the pre-game show. Uh, Brosky, a perfect place this for a starcation as they call it, or even a staycation. I think you've actually stayed here, I've you? stayed here once before and it was a uh, little date night with me and the missus after, a, after an awards <laughs> night, I think. So okay. it was a uh, very beautiful place. Lovely. Okay, well, we'll uh, talk about football, of course, for the next uh, <laughs> half an hour or so, not Brosky's anniversaries. Um, <laughs> it's been a bit of a mixed week for the club in terms of uh, the men's team, a little bit up and down. Uh, the women's team, conversely, having a, a fantastic time of things at the moment. More on that uh, a little bit later. And, of course, we'll look ahead uh, to this weekend's game against MacArthur. But uh, before that, let's have a little look back on how Steve Corica's men's team have fared over the last seven days. Tall Englishman. Now Caceres cutting in, teeing up Ninkovic. Milos Ninkovic and Jamie Young saw plenty of it. Got up to provide an option for him. Capable of hitting them and Redmayne had to tip it over. Through the middle goes Caceres, dances around one. Barbarousas! And Jamie Young stood up so bravely at this triple substitution. Look at the firepower. Barbarousas around the corner. Aldred on one leg, and back off the bar from Ryan Grant. Barbarousas didn't give up on this one, in behind. Deflections, this time, oh no, the post again. The woodwork denies Ryan Grant for the second time in a couple of minutes. And now Bob Johan lifting it, great ball. Oh, what a save from Jamie Young with the outstretched left. Jamie Young's pulled off a worldie with his feet. Goal scoring areas, Ryan Grant got into it in the space of a couple of minutes, hitting the woodwork twice. Now he's defending. O'Shea. Jay O'Shea kept out by Redmayne this time. Well, Broski, on last week's show, we, of course, predicted a bucket load of goals because this fixture normally produces them. So uh, perhaps no surprise that we put the mockers on it and we got none in the end. Uh, definitely, yeah. Look, it was a very, very tense game. I think there weren't too many chances overall. Um, and look, the boys, I think, will probably be disappointed with a point. But uh, I think given the second half and the way that they, um, they really came home strong, there were a few chances. I think especially Ryan Grant had a couple of good chances and maybe the, uh, the shaving of the old mullet put him off balance, uh, I'm not sure, but look, I think it's, it's great that he's actually getting in those positions again, which is, um, from a team perspective, good to see. And Bobo as well almost got the dream, uh, the dream goal on his, on his uh, you know, debut again. The three Bs came off the bench around the hour mark. The return of the killer Bs, they used to call you a Mark Bridge that, and they made a difference, didn't they? <laughs> they definitely did. I mean, when you've got uh, three guys like that coming off the bench, it definitely lifts the team, and, um, and I thought that's exactly what happened. So Stevie waited to the right moment. Um, it was, the game was in, in the balance there around that 60th minute, and to bring those three on, for me, they changed the game. They, they start, Sydney looked a lot more lively. Um, they looked like they had a lot more intent going forward and uh, created a number of chances. So unlucky in the end not to win the game. Yeah, and credit to Jamie Young, the Brisbane Royal goalkeeper as well, who had a terrific uh, performance uh, between the posts. Just on uh, Bobo, that uh, final half an hour, which was probably all his legs could, could give us at, at the moment. Um, what did you make of his performance? I thought he was, uh, he was good. It's what you expected, I think. It's been a while since he's had some real football action. Um, so his touches were good. He held the ball up. Everything you expect from Bobo. He's, he's a guy, a, a, a typical number nine, you know. He holds the ball up well, brings players into, into the action. And, um, and I thought he did that. And then he had a chance which, uh, you know, if not for Jamie Young's outstanding save, uh, would have been, like I said, the dream, the dream uh, restart for him. So I thought it was encouraging. Well, if the performance against Brisbane Raw was decent, uh, the results and the display against Melbourne City, a little bit less so, fair to say, Broski. Uh, the team going down, of course, and not a great performance. Um, no, it wasn't. I think they, they just didn't start well in the first half and um, Melbourne City just took their chances. Jane, uh, you know, I think that the strikers were just clinical. You know, those two goals there from, um, from Melbourne City. Um, look, McLaren, obviously a striker that's in form and, and you just can't allow him any space in the box because he'll punish you. But look, what I did like, I think at 3-0, um, you know, a lot of teams can cave and it was good to see, even though Sydney was just having one of those games in the first half, they didn't let that, um, you know, define the game. They came back well, they got two late goals and 
probably could have even equalised to, to get something out of the game. So a little bit unlucky in the end, but you know, definitely the poor start you know, killed them. And again, a good uh, contribution off the bench, this time by Milos Ninkovic, who was uh, rested from the start against uh, Melbourne City at Amy Park, uh, and also from uh, Geordie Swibel as well. Yeah, both players. I think, again, like, like I said in the first game against Brisbane, uh, when you've got players like that of quality that you can bring on, um, you know, it, it really adds to the team and it gives them a lift when, when you need it, when the legs are starting to go. Um, and who better to bring on than Ninko? I know he needed a bit of a rest. He's, he's played a lot of football and um, you need to manage his legs. But uh, to have him come on and create a lot of opportunities, bring that quality that he does is exactly what the team needed. And um, again, just a little bit unlucky they couldn't get a point. But what did you put that first half performance down to? Was it the short turnaround? Is it the fact that uh, Sydney FC were actually on the road, which I think is the first time has happened in terms of flying to a destination in about a year? Yeah, I, look, I just think for me personally, I don't think um, you, you can look at a lot of things, but I just think it was one of those games. I think sometimes when you just don't start well, which can happen from week to week, it can happen once every couple games. Um, and Sydney just got punished to, you know, in that game where sometimes it doesn't always happen. They got punished and, um, and it makes it look a lot worse than what it was. So I don't think they started any, any more poorly than probably some, some of other games. But again, when a team has Jamie McLaren and, and Naboo coming off, he was fresh and lively as well. Uh, you just can't afford to make uh, some, some mistakes that the, that the boys unfortunately did. And a further problem for Steve Corica, of course, is that uh, there was a head knock, a nasty head knock for Luke Bratton uh, in that game as well, which uh, could rule him out of uh, the next game against MacArthur. This was a real bell ringer, as they call it, Broski. It definitely was. It was uh, hard to watch, actually. Um, you know, not just myself, but I'm sure everyone watching was very concerned for him. And he, look, he looked a little bit groggy getting up there. But um, look, good to see that he'll be OK and, and probably a little bit touch and go for this weekend's game. But um, look, good to see that he's OK. And like I said, that probably rattled the boys a little bit as well. Having a, a player as influ influential as, as uh, Bratton coming off never helps the situation, but um, good to see him okay. Yeah, you've got to be careful with uh, head knocks, particularly uh, these days. We know all the publicity uh, around that particular problem. Well, let's uh, hear now from the Sydney FC head coach, Steve Corrigan, his thoughts on that uh, performance against Melbourne City. Uh, that wasn't us in the first half, especially. Um, they come out a lot more hungrier. They were winning every challenge, every second ball, everything was falling to them. So, and like you said, we're Probably first time I've said this, we probably were outclassed in that first half. Obviously changed a little bit in the second half, bringing on Ninko and a couple of the younger boys as well. Um, and really, in the end, we probably could have got a point because I'm not sure what VAR saw. I know what I saw in the dying minutes. It was handball and um, probably could have stolen a point. Um, but I'm just not sure about the decision they made at the end. for Sydney who you know we, we've seen over the years now just even when you're out of sorts you're able to get a result is there a reason why or yeah just well I think no I, I, I'll give them credit they were they were very good in the first half like I said I think it comes down to who wanted to win it more and I it looked like they wanted to win it more in the first half so um but uh yeah it wasn't uh, just one or two players it was Pretty much all of our boys, we looked a little bit sluggish in the first half. Whether, you know, the short turnaround didn't help us, I'm not sure. But, you know, we, we want to play games and we have to deal with this, I suppose. And there's going to be a lot more times that we, we have to turn around after two days. So, um, but yeah, I, I think if you get one or two boys off, I think there's, you know, it's, it's, it's not too bad. But when you have most of the boys off, it's, uh, it's going to be a difficult night for you. Yeah, Steve Corica, uh, pretty blunt with his assessment there, Broski. It's not too often that we hear uh, Bimby that's critical about his own players. No, and, and I think managers in general, I think it's actually good and refreshing to see that because a lot of managers can sugarcoat and look for excuses as to why things went wrong. But look, he was honest and sometimes I think that's the best way to be, just um, be upfront and honest about the boys that, that they were off. Um, no, they've been great. They've been great for the last couple of seasons. So they're going to have off nights, which they probably did in the first 45 minutes and there's no need to sugarcoat it. I think it's good to be up front and say yeah. that, that it's exactly what happened and uh, move on from it. Just one more on the City game before we move on to uh, the W League and other things, the A-League game against MacArthur. Should Sydney have had a penalty? Look, it was, uh, I think as a, as a Sydney 
fan and player, <laughs> it's easy to sit here and say yes. But look, I think um, in the dying minutes of a game, when the team's away from home, a ref is, is you know, if it's a 50-50, which I think it was, you've seen them given, you've seen them not given, uh, very hard for a, for a referee to make that decision and actually give a penalty for the away team. All right, let's look ahead rather than back. Uh, Sydney FC men's team next game is against uh, MacArthur FC. Of course, they played earlier on in the season and the Sky Blues are pretty convincing winners, Broski, by uh, three goals to nil. So uh, the Bulls will be out for a bit of revenge. They will. And um, just in general, I think they, uh, you know, two weeks ago, they, they had a good result against Adelaide 4 nil at home uh, and looked like they were going to kick on from there. And then, um, you know, they cop four goals the next week against Western United. So a little bit up and down, yeah? They definitely are, definitely are. And look, every team is striving for some sort of consistency and um, no, they're no different. But I think, you know, to add to it, Sydney having, you know, convincingly beaten them last game, they'll be out for revenge, absolutely. And Sydney will have, uh, of course, a point to prove to their own coach, I think, after his <laughs> comments uh, after the loss against uh, Melbourne City. So you'd expect them to to bounce back and have a, a much improved performance. Yeah, and I think it will be. I think, uh, like we said, Stevie's comments were, were very uh, honest and blunt, um, just to put the players on notice a little bit. But um, look, they'll be doing their homework again on the last game against MacArthur and just wanting a repeat of that. OK, well, if it's been a bit of an up and down week for the A-League team, then it's been a pretty good week uh, for the Sky Blues W League team. Uh, they were the success story uh, this week. And of course, they've got another chance to improve upon their good week uh, tonight against uh, Perth Glory, the long trip west. But first, let's have a look back at their great win over Adelaide United. That's the danger, Robertson. Another court in possession. It's well won by Rule. Allows Sydney to come forward again. Simpson, it might break back to her. Into the penalty area. Good save from Annerley Grove. A moment of opportunity might just have gone for Sydney FC. Elias with the corner. And it goes. Grove is flapping and it's in. The goal is given. And Simpson claims it. Grove came out to try and punch it clear, but I don't think got too close. They'll look to add to that tally of 12 with Palias's corner. In towards the near post again. And again a flat from the goalkeeper. Is it an own goal? Now has it come off the back of the head of Courtney Vine? They go 2-0 up to Sydney FC here. As the ball was floated in from Palias. Those changes are made. Free kick though, this is an opportunity for Adelaide. All curled in, good ball as well, and it goes all the way through and in. And the Sydney Sunshine, that's a loose touch, and here's Rojas in on goal for Adelaide. Straight at the keeper, Wyman, who makes the save. What an opportunity for Adelaide to draw level here at Cromer Park. All of Sydney FC's own doing. That is a real opportunity. Ajada Wyman bails Sydney FC out. And here is Sydney in the middle of the park with a beanie looking to run through. She's away from the final defender, Princess Abini. Good save from Grove in the closing stages to keep it at 2 1. And there is the four time whistle. And Sydney FC are back to winning ways and will remain top of the table. Yeah, really good uh, performance from the Sky Blues W League team, particularly on the back of that heavy loss to Brisbane Raw. They needed a response, Broski, and they got one. Absolutely. I think everyone was looking to see how they'd respond after that loss, which was uh, you know, definitely hard, hard for them to take. And they responded exactly how you would expect a, you know, a champion team to, to respond. They came out well, uh, took a two-goal lead and um, you know, conceded one you know, to, uh, to make it a nervy game. But, um, and even in the last few minutes, Jada Wyman pulled off an incredible save, but they could have wrapped it there with Princess Avini as well. All in all, I think a good, um, a good and much needed win. What about the pocket rocket, Teresa Polias? Her delivery from corners this season, nothing short of outstanding. I think they've scored six goals from these sorts of uh, deliveries into the box. They're terrific, aren't they? They are. And look, it says a lot, not just about her quality, but obviously the emphasis that they put on set pieces. They're, they're such a big and vital part of the game that I, I don't think it can be understated. And I think the fact that they've scored that many goals from set pieces is credit to, um, you know, not just the delivery, but I think Ante Juric for, for, you know, making sure that the girls know what they're doing when it comes to set pieces and actually going out in the field and, um, and delivering on them. One or two people uh, starting to call for Teresa to be 
back in the mix for Matilda's selection. She has played for the national team uh, before, of course, but I guess there's a fair bit of competition in that uh, part of the field. It would be, but why not? I think whenever uh, you're looking to, to a national team to pick players, I think it's, it's obvious that you look to the teams that are doing well. And Sydney, obviously, top of the, of the ladder and flying. Um, you look to the players that are doing well. And, and Teresa Ply is having an incredible season. She's, you know, the engine in that, uh, in that midfield for them. Uh, she makes things tick. And when she's not there, it's very noticeable. So why not? Well, talking of not being there, unfortunately, Teresa will not play uh, tonight against uh, Perth Glory. That's uh, due to work commitments. How big a blow is that for the W League team? Um, big, like I said, it, when she's not there, you definitely notice that she's not there. She gives so much uh, energy uh, into that team. And look, I think they'll just have to find a way without her because tonight's a very big game, a uh, big trip away to Perth who aren't doing well. So, and they can go a long way to securing the, the minor premiership tonight. So they'll just have to overcome the loss. She is a big loss to them in not being there. But uh, look, they can do it. They've shown all year that uh, regardless of who's in, who's out, they've got the, uh, the girls and the, uh, the power to still win games. Glory, one of the weaker teams in the W League this season, but still a, a crucial game in the West. Uh, a win for Sydney would put the Sky Blues five points in front with just uh, three games to play for both themselves and for Brisbane, their closest competitors. Sydney have Adelaide again, Canberra United and uh, Victory still to play. So you'd think, Broski, a win tonight and effectively, you don't want to put the mockers on it, but they're almost <laughs> there for the Premiership, aren't they? Well, they are, they are. And, and look, it's, it's there, it's within grasp, and I think they'll be definitely looking to, to take full advantage. Perth is a, a difficult away trip, regardless of how they're it's going on the <laughs> It's a long way, it's a long flight, and it's, uh, it's never easy. So it will be difficult, but uh, look, like I said, Ante Juric has had them ticking along just fine and, and they'll be ready for it. All right, well, we often like to look on uh, the brighter side of life on this uh, pre-game show and a uh, fair bit's been happening at the club the first uh, couple of months of the new campaign. So we thought we'd take a little look at uh, the lighter side of some of our filming this season. Have a look. Good morning, Redmond. Good morning. Say good morning or something. No, come on now. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. Look at the barrel of the camera. Mm -hmm. Now take a sip. How good is it? Mmm. Mmm. Cool. You can hear me? Oh, it's a sink. Oh, sink. I was like, oh, I wasn't sure. I feel like I've done this before. Yeah, not bad. It's a, it's a pretty good game, really. But the boys normally play it in threes. The ones with a decent touch, anyway. Tech ball, that's what it is. Tech ball. They've all heard it. Hey. Interesting one, eh? Dynamic, right? Yeah, it is very di I'm mic'd up. Yeah, I'm mic'd up. Yeah, yeah. I do a lot of baking. You know that. You do baking? I do oh, baking. Yeah. Baked beans? No. Yeah. From the can? Caramel slice. You know my caramel slice. That last bit just has to get set up down there. Yeah. Just the two floaters. Yeah. We're going to need... So you'll get a colour there. What I'm going to do, I'm going to do a four That's there. Four. We'll do a four with, with... The only thing is we need a, si we need a six. Yeah, as I said, I'll give you 10 bucks every time you laugh at one joke. <laughs> like, it wasn't even just one day. It was like every time we looked at it. <laughs> better, boys. Better. Good. Touch, Chrissy. Good. Love that, George. Well done, Lukey. Good, Lukey. Touch, finish. Great first touch, Lukey. One all. By the way, this pineapple's outstanding these days. Do you want some stuff? Get it in you. Let's get it in you. Chuck it in your gob. Describe the flavours for me. Super sweet. It's actually my first bit of food for the day. I don't mind cooking, I might take over. Winner winner chicken dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Giving you attitude right before my quiz. Awesome work. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah. Study up, you're gonna be a, a um, studious little, little nah, student out there. This is my strong point now, I'm terrible at yeah. remembering. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I won't look at the camera then. <laughs> We're rolling. <laughs> Certainly some characters in that uh, dressing room, Broski. Who, who's the funniest one out of that lot? Because you played with most of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And look, you, you watch those scenes there, and as a fan, it's good to see, because you don't get to see the boys in their, uh, in their element there amongst the, uh, the kitchen and with the chef. The chef's probably one, actually. He's, right. uh, uh, he's a laugh. He's always got Give the boys Give him a name check. Come on. Who, George? The uh, chef. Look, he's... Um, <laughs> 
What do you mean by name check? As in, what's his name? Oh, George, isn't it? George. Oh, George. Okay. I was there for years. If I get his name wrong, he'll <laughs> well, kill people me. People might not know who George is. <laughs> ah, right, right. No, George is great. He's been there for a few years now, and he's, he's big on... Uh, Whenever there's a big game coming up, he's got a great speech that gets the boys okay. in stitches. So he tries to keep it professional and to get them fired up, but the boys just crack up laughing. He's, he's great. Okay, well, let's uh, try and keep it professional as we uh, <laughs> round out the show. Prediction time, Broski, for both uh, the W League team tonight against Glory and the men's against MacArthur at the weekend. Uh, the W League, I think, look, with them not having Teresa Polias and their inspirational leader tonight, I think the girls are going to have to step, step up all, all over the park, and I think they will. I think they'll come out convincing with a 3 0 win. And the, uh, and the boys, I think they'll, they'll come good as well. I think um, after the last time, they'll, they'll have that fresh in their mind. They'll want to bounce back as well. I'm going 2-0. OK, we shall see if you are correct. Thanks, Broski. Good to have your company. Um, that is us for this week. We're going to take a little bit of a break uh, from the Sky Blue show, but we are going to be back a little bit later on in the season. Uh, don't forget, you can catch all the action this weekend. Fox Sports Channel 505, as well as the Telstra, My Football Live app and KO Sports. The W League game tonight uh, will be on KO and the My Football Live app. We will uh, see you later on in the season. Thanks for watching our show from me and Broski. We're going to leave you with uh, the goals from the last uh, Sydney derby between the Sky Blues and MacArthur FC. We'll see you again soon. Featuring heavily here, Wilkinson getting into the mix. McGowan! Oh, what a save from Federici! Great action at Campbelltown! Risky header by Franic, gives Fahadja another chance and Mark Milligan is facing a red card here I fancy. He's up in the first derby between these clubs. Dancing around Retray, great shot, great save. Redmayne got a tip on it, not spotted again was it, now it is. Retray, Paul keeps finding him, it's a nice delivery in towards Grant. Who kept on going and slides it through. Costa Barbarossa's tapping. Patrick Wood has his first A League goal and Sydney FC lead the derby. It's an inspired change from Steve Corica. Bahaja off. Patrick Wood on. Every time he has possession, Ninkovic slides all the way through. Milos Ninkovic, what a moment! ago in November of 2019 and right now in the 76th minute it's another moment from Milos what a player just imagine what's going through his mind head up does the head count looks at the available space and I know where I'm going they're not going to stop him Mr Barbarous has received congratulations from his coach after notching the assist for that Patrick Wood goal there is Swivel, the youthful front pairing now. Swivel and Wood, and it breaks Wood's way. He's got a double. The 18-year-old, a night he'll never forget. Patrick Wood has a brace to win Sydney FC a derby.